Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about defrost. Defrosting a freezer. But typically defrosting a freezer, one of the things that you're going to do is you're going to use one of these, a Paragon defrost timer. Now these here, they're very, very common in, this, in the industry. We use them all the time, but the directions can be a little confusing. So let me explain to you about these, okay? First of all, let me separate these two into two categories. One, the mechanical timer, and then the other one that has a solenoid built in. A solenoid, so you have the mechanical, the solenoid, the mechanical, the actual linkages in there are gonna open and close the contacts mechanically. The one with the solenoid, what's gonna happen for that is you're gonna energize the solenoid and that's gonna open and close the contacts just like in a relay. Now, if you remember, I did a, a, a video a while back about how relays work and how to hook up relays and so on. So take a look at that, look on my, uh, look on my page and you can see that, um, you can see what I'm talking about. But anyway, let's get back to these timers. So on these, like I said, they're gonna be mechanical. Typically, they're going, to, they're going to be identified by the first two numbers, and that is the 80. So, for example, you might have an 80, let's say, 45. The 80 is going to tell you that that is a mechanical. If it had, let's say, an 81, that's going to tell you that that's going to have a solenoid on it. That has a solenoid. That's the difference between the two. Now, let me separate these two again because now, after this, there's going to be a number. Let's say, for example, zero, zero. If you see zero, zero, that tells you that it's going to be 120 volts. If it happens to be two, zero, then that's going to be 208 slash 240 volts. So the two numbers in the back will tell you what the voltages are. The first numbers will tell you if it's a mechanical or solenoid. Then the last two will tell you what the voltages on these are. Now, let's start off with the let's start off with the mechanical. Let me let's let's look to see how that works. So let's take a look how this would work. We know that typically we're going to need power supply. Let's say, for example, we're going to label this L1. The switch is going to be before this, so I'm not going to draw the, draw the switch, but we're going to come here, and that is going to go right on over to my timer motor. This timer motor is going to go out back either to L2 or to a neutral, depending on if it is 120 volts or 240 volts. But regardless, now we have power going through this timer motor. This timer motor is going to be rotating, and this timer motor is going to rotate a cam. This cam is going to be kind of like this, like that. So now, this cam is rotating, and let's say it is rotating this way, like this. Up here on top, what they're going to do is they're going to come off of here, and they're going to come to here, and they're going to have a switch here. The switch is going to be riding right on that cam. So as this cam rotates, that's going to fall. Once it falls, it's going to make, and it's going to send power out to It's going to send power out to, let's say, for example, my my heater. So now, once the timer falls, sends power to my heater, my heater is going to come on. But we don't want we don't want that heater coming on while the compressor is running. So what we're going to do is we're going to come off of here, and we're going to feed my my compressor right here that comes here and it goes like that so now as this timer motor is rotating it's going to be rotating this and you are going to set this differential right here or this this defrost time you're also going to have to set how long you want it to be between here and 
here. How long between every single defrost? That depends on your system. So now you're going to have to say, okay, I want this to happen every six hours, every eight hours, maybe every 12 hours. So you're going to set that. Then you're going to have to set it to see how long do you want it to be on defrost. Maybe you want it to be on defrost for five minutes or maybe 10 minutes, maybe three minutes, maybe two minutes. That just depends. So you're going to have to do these two settings yourself. But the point is that here we're going to have power coming in and that's going to be going out here to, like I said before, either neutral or it's going to be going to L2 depending on whether it's 208, 240 volts or 120 volts, depending on which one. As this rotates, then we're going to go into defrost, turning the heater on and turning the compressor off. You're going to set these timers so that you know what how long it's going to be in defrost for. Now, I'm going to erase this because I need to draw some other ones, but that's the nice thing about having these videos because you can back it up and take a look as to how this works. But before I do that, let me go ahead and explain that some of these, they have three connections on them. They have some of these timers, as you can see, they're going to have either one, two, three, or four connections on them. You're going to have an X on it, Sometimes you may have an N on it, but some of these are going to be labeled one through four. So for example, here on this one, we have one set of contacts here, another set of contacts right there. And what they will do is they'll bring in another switch up here like this. Once they bring it in, the switch right here, then it's going to be just like this other one, like this. And then this is going to be going to another motor, but this motor is going to be my fan. From here, they take it and they bring it on down like this. So now, these two switches are going to be mechanically connected. So once this rotates and this falls, it's going to turn the heater on, turn the compressor off, and turn the evaporator fan off because we don't want to run the fan while the heater's on so that the heater can melt the ice much, much faster. Now, typically on these, what happens is instead of drawing it like this in the prints that you get, what you're going to have is going to have this. So this would be normally open. This one would be normally closed like this. And this other one would be normally closed. So one would be for, let's say, the fan. The other one would be for the compressor. And the other one would be for your electric heater. For your electric heater so you can heat up the evaporator coil and get rid of the ice. So instead of seeing these switches here like this, this is what you're going to see. But it's the same thing. It is the same thing. So let me go ahead and erase this now, and we will talk about the, the, uh, the ones with the solenoid. Okay, now that this is gone, let's talk about the 8100 series. We said the 80 series is the one that has the mechanical timer. 8100 series is the one that has the, the solenoid on it. So let's talk about that. The other thing I did mention was that if you have a 45, 80, let's say 8045, the 45 tells you that it has two switches on it. 85, I mean 45 has two switches. If it has an 8041, 8043, 8047, those have three switches on them. I just drew the one, first I drew the one with two switches. Well, we turned off the compressor, turned on the heater, and then I did the one that had the three switches, which is the one for the fan, the one for the compressor, and one for the heater, because we want to turn those three things off. But now let's get back to the 8100 series that has the solenoid. Just like before, what we're going to need is we're going to need a power supply. We're going to need a power supply like this, and this power supply is going to go to my timer motor just like this. 
From the timer motor, we're going to come here and we're gonna, let's say, go out like this, okay? This timer motor is gonna be rotating, rotating, rotating. But don't forget, this timer motor is either going to be 120 volts, so we're gonna have an L1 there, and then, let's say, a neutral on this side, or L2 to make it 208 to 40. As this timer mode rotates, it's gonna be rotating that same cam that we talked about before. So now we're gonna be rotating this cam like this, and that cam is gonna have this here, so that now that is going to be rotating and we're going to have a switch that's going to come off of here like this and it's going to come up like this and ride on like that. Once the switch makes, what's going to happen is we're going to turn on a solenoid. We're going to turn on a solenoid like this and every time that comes down, the solenoid is going to energize because we're going to send power to it. Again, you are going to have to set how long between defrost, and then you're gonna to have to set how long your defrost is gonna last. These are settings that you are going to have to do, and that's why they have those little pins on there, and those pins will tell you for the on or for the off. Okay, so let's get back to this. So in here, this solenoid is gonna work just like a relay. Like I said before, I have a video that talks about relays, but on here, what they have done is they will come this way and they will have a normally open switch. This normally open switch and the other, the other one that we were looking at, the op open went to where? It went to the heater. It went to the heater. From the heater, we take it here and it goes on out this way. Now, also, the other thing that they do is they come here and they go to a normally closed. Where was that normally closed going? That normally closed was going to the compressor. Then there was another one. It came here and that went to a normally closed and that went to the fan. Both of these are going to connect like this. This is the 8100 series because it has a solenoid. Now, why the solenoid? Well, it's kind of important because one of the things that they do is that they will go ahead and use the solenoid to make it go into defrost. In other words, to make it more efficient. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that now they put a switch right here after the solenoid. And this will be what they call a defrost thermostat switch. Defrost thermostat switch. So now this is gonna be just like a heat pump for a house or a commercial residential unit where it goes by time, by time and temperature. So if the box is not, is not cold enough, if the box is not cold enough, this will be open. Even though this closes, it's not gonna go into defrost. So once the coil, the temperature of the coil drops, this will be closed. When it calls for defrost, it will turn the heater on, turn the compressor off, and turn the fan off for the defrost. Now I have been talking about a heater. On some of these, especially these right here that are a little more complicated, what they do is they may not use a uh, heater. They may use a hot gas bypass valve. If they use a hot gas bypass valve, now they're going to open up and they're going to send the hot gas from the compressor discharge into the evaporator to melt the ice. They're going to melt the ice. One of the things they may do is they may not turn the compressor off. They may leave the compressor on so that now you do have plenty of hot gas coming out of the compressor going over to the evaporator, thawing it out. And yes, of course, they would want to turn the fan off. But these are things that you have to look at in your unit and see how those might be set up. Okay, so let's do a quick review. We said that if it's an 8000 series, 
then it's going to be mechanical. If it's 8000, it's going to be mechanical. If it's 8100 series, then it's going to be your solenoid type. If it's, let's say, for example, 8045 or 8145, let's say 8000 series is going to be mechanical. If it's 8100 series, then it's going to be solenoid operated. If it is, let's say, for example, 8045, because of the 45, that tells me that it's going to have only two switches. One is going to be normally closed, the other one is going to be normally open. If it happens to be a 41, 43, or 47, that is going to have three switches. One is going to be for the heater, the other one is going to be for the compressor, and the other one is going to be for the fan. Next question is why 41, 43, and 47? Well, because it depends on how it is wired up internally. Internally, so that you're either going to hook up, let's say, L2 to the X, or L2 to the N, or L2 to one of the other connections. There's a lot to talk about, so I can't really go over all of this. You're going to have to look at the wiring diagram in the system. But at least we know that we're going to be doing three things. We're going to be turning the heater on. We're going to turn the compressor off. And the fan is going to be, the fan is going to be off. Now, also we said that sometimes you may not have the electric heat. You may have what they call a hot gas bypass. So you've got to keep that in mind too. But I want you to understand basically how the Paragon defrost timers work. Don't forget, you're going to have to set the timer so that you know how often it's going to be. And that depends on their system. It may be every 8 hours, maybe 12 hours, maybe 24 hours. And also, how long is your defrost going to last? Don't forget, also, you may have the defrost thermostat that's going to override your defrost because maybe it does not need to be thawed out at that moment. Now, I hope this helped. Um, again, my name is Julio, Aircon Academy. Make sure you subscribe to my uh, channel, follow me on Facebook, and if you have any suggestions, please let me know. That's why I'm doing this one, because somebody asked me to talk about these timers. So thank you, and see you soon.